It's Kate and Oliver Hudson. Hudson. <laughs> Host of the new podcast, Sibling, Sibling Revelry. Revelry. That's right. We started this show because, you know what? No one talks about siblings and that dynamic. The siblings, they know each other better than anybody. Yes. You know. Listen to Sibling Revelry on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Jacob Goldstein. I used to host Planet Money. Now I'm starting a new show. It's called What's Your Problem? Every week on What's Your Problem, entrepreneurs and engineers describe the future they're going to build. Once they solve a few problems, I'm talking to people trying to figure out how to do things that no one on the planet knows how to do, from creating a drone delivery business to building a car that can truly drive itself. Listen to What's Your Problem on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. Episode 261, Let's Normalize Secondhand Gifting. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, Black Friday edition. Hey, we're here and we're normalizing stuff. Yes, my name is Jen. My name is Jill. And... Today is America's actual favorite holiday. (laughs) They may say it's Christmas or even Halloween, but we know where the money goes and we know that it's Black Friday. If the Christmas decor keeps coming out earlier and earlier every year, how much more so are the Black Friday sales oh coming my out earlier and earlier every year? So that proves it's yeah. America's favorite holiday. I'm waiting for them like Labor Day just to skip right to Black Friday. <laughs> yeah. Like Labor Day sales end and then Black Friday starts. It's uh, mark one your day, words. People. Yeah. It's like this is a black one day. Like let's not color the whole season black. I guess October's What's... already kind of black, so it wouldn't fall. Like October, Halloween, oh, black and orange. Gotcha. Okay, anyways, happy Black Friday. Today, we are pushing back, not on shopping. We love getting a good deal, um, but we are pushing back on all of the vanity gifts mm. and the obligatory gifts and the obligatory firsthand brand new gifts that people feel like they need to give. And today, we're going to normalize secondhand gifting. You're going to you're going to leave this episode and you're going to feel like mm, I'm going to shop thrift for everyone, <laughs> eBay for everyone, thread up for everyone. <laughs> you are going to be so excited about it and by golly so will they. com slash everyone. That won't take you anywhere. Don't yeah, don't no, plug yeah, that no. in. The, the thing is is that even the best of us fall for this. We get caught up into whatever is happening in the sea. There is this like feeling that kind of comes over me at least. You and I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you and your gift setups that you have (laughs) for your niece and nephew over here. Jill is so extra with (laughs) gift giving. And so this episode's for Jill. Well, yeah. And (laughs) that's the thing because and I was just talking with my husband about this too, that my ideal self, my ideologies are one thing. But Mm -hmm. I'm realizing that in certain areas of life, my actions don't always line up with that like yeah. in my in my mind i'm minimalist i don't i, I don't want to buy new i don't want to buy junk i don't want throwaway things i don't want plastic i don't want to just get a gift for the sake of getting a gift but then my niece and nephew come to visit me and i lose my mind she i'm like so extra how, I, it's I, adorable I, I want to go to the plastic section and just like get the things that i think are going to excite them i do feel like i did decent this time I already had some stuffed animals on hand and I bought crafts that we could do together that have like a carrying case with them whatever I just I could have gone so much extra and I'm still trying to hone it in all Mm -hmm. I'm saying is I'm with you for this episode we're all gonna try this together we can do hard things but like even me who considers myself super super non-spendy 
there are certain things that are like my kryptonite and well and your and gift giving can still be your love language yeah. and you can do it in a better way. Yep. You can just get creative, you can improve and there's prioritizing, there's grace, but there is room always for improvement. Yeah. And well, we're going to talk about that today. That's where we are today. But first, this episode is brought to you by our annual debt-free Christmas planner. Woo-hoo. It's back. This free 20-page planner will help you plan your holiday budget, gifts, track online orders, write out your favorite holiday recipes, and even track your savings for next year with a cute tree where you can color in all the ornaments. Oh, it's that. very great. So... If you're already on our email list, check your inbox today, probably after like 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, and it will already be in your inbox. If you are not on our email list, why? Because we send free stuff out like this all the time. Uh, Head to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash Christmas to grab yours, and that will get you on our email list so you can get all the freebies we send out. I love freebies and you just get them to your inbox. Yeah. We're like an email you don't have to unsubscribe to. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's like not just like PDFs and spreadsheets. It's like playlists and different like articles, things, Mm. just Mm. always good stuff. And I'm biased because I write them. (laughs) And I'm biased because you're my friend and I support you. Thank you. And I also think they're great. I love you for that. Mm. So if you are gearing up for gifting, it's 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 time. It's the best time of the year. Then we have a few other gifting episodes for you. We've got episode 121, um, what to do after the declutter. So tips for donating, gifting, selling, all that. And then we have episode 34 with free and easy gift ideas, especially last minute gifts for frugal gifters, because that's That's where we spend the most money is last Mm -hmm. minute stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love all these episodes because I just, I do. You've, you, you caught me, Jen. You know me. It's not an Enneagram number. It's, uh, (laughs) it's a gifting. It's a love language and you are so good at it. Well, I don't know. That that feels like pressure. I say, no, it's not pressure. It's a, it's, you have a gift for gifting Mm -hmm. and I am excited to see how you expand with this new challenge. Yeah. So let's get into it. The first article is eight important reasons to buy gifts secondhand. And I would love to know how this how this article attacked you. I mean, impacted you, (laughs) Jill. Well, here's the thing. I you don't have to get me on board with this. I'm already there. I, I love the thrift store. I love yard sales. I love buying secondhand. And spoiler alert, a lot of my gifts are secondhand. <laughs> and we'll we'll talk about that in the second article about how we can do this and not offend people, but <laughs> I don't really worry about that. <laughs> I just do what yeah. I'm going to do and we'll see how see how the cookie crumbs fall. But yes, let's convince ourselves further on why this is a good idea whether you're already doing it, this will just be further validation or if you're not giving secondhand stuff as gifts, here's some reasons why and maybe kind of lower that barrier to entry. So so I think great reasons here. The first is that giving secondhand reduces waste. We already know this in our own lives. So of course, it's going to apply when we give gifts. We are not purchasing new. We're not getting it all wrapped in the unnecessary plastic and packaging that just gets thrown away. Uh, we are taking things out of the thrift store, not yeah, continuing to lead to the, the consumption and consumerism that definitely we're plagued by this time of year. And another great reason, speaking of like reducing waste, is that these things often come pre-assembled. Like it, it not only reduces mm-hmm. waste, but it reduces our waste of time. I don't know if you've ever gotten or your kids have gotten a gift that 
you not only do you have to like use the jaws of life to get that gift out of its packaging, but then you have to assemble the yeah. gift. You've got to hunt for the batteries. You got to do this. You got to do that. And secondhand gifts usually come pre-assembled along with all other types of things, like whether it's furniture or, or you name it. We often, when we're getting so many things delivered to our homes, now we're so accustomed to putting them together ourselves. And so it reduces our waste of time as well. Yeah, I love this, especially on Facebook Marketplace, where you get some of your bigger items. So that is absolutely true. Uh, Number two is secondhand gifting supports local communities and local economies. And if if solely for the reason that you are not supporting, that you are just pulling some of your support from big box retailers. So that's kind of just by omission. Uh, You're just taking it away from there. But the article says that a healthy local economy is a backbone for strong local community, uh, which often leads to happier residents, more connected and invested neighbors. I don't know, one of our uh, one of our after, we don't talk about the after show, but one of our after shows where I talked about how I got a coffee table on Facebook Marketplace and ended up at a house I used to live at. It's just so crazy. So weird. Yeah. Um, but supporting local secondhand shops support, supports the local community and using buy nothing groups, free cycle, Facebook Marketplace you support uh, the individuals in mm-hmm. the community. So we we pay for items that we purchase. So would you rather your money going to Jeff Bezos or to your neighbors in your community? And And I think this is a really, this is the same reason why we say keep your money in a credit union versus a big bank mm-hmm. because your money stays in the community. It supports the local economy. Um, and this is just a continuation of, of, of that on a more direct level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're getting to the point and recognizing that buying secondhand isn't just a financial decision. It's also connected to our own morality and ethics and the way we want to show up in the world. So even if we, I think it helps to reduce the stigma that buying secondhand is just something cheap people do or, you know, something stingy that people do. There's so much more to it and it's running deeper and deeper that I think more people are getting on board with, which I'm so thrilled for. Like you are buying from somebody and giving them money who also is buying gifts for their children. Yeah. Like Jeff Bezos doesn't need any more money to buy gifts for his children, but the people in your community do. Yeah. 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 And when you're shopping at local thrift stores, usually they're nonprofits, which Mm -hmm. is supporting some of the nonprofits within your community. So it's like a win win where you're practically donating to them while also getting some of the things that you need and helping you and your own generosity. My goodness. Oh, Oh, so so beautiful. We're only on the second reason. We're going to jump to the fourth reason, though. We're not going to go through all eight on here, but secondhand gifting is more affordable. I mean, Mm. that's just pretty obvious. I think one of these articles mentions that she started tracking how much she was spending on her gifts that she was buying at secondhand stores versus what she would have spent on that item new. And it ranged anywhere from 56 to 96 percent off of what Mm -hmm. the new the new items cost would have been. And that's massive. Even when we talk about, I know we did a couponing episode, like the most you can expect to save on a new item is like 10 to 15%. Oh, if you're lucky. Yeah. So if you're talking 56 to 96 percent off of what the new item would have been. My goodness, that's steep discounts. That's where to focus. But also what it means is that we can still buy high quality. I mean, I I have rarely been to a thrift store where I couldn't find multiple things of high quality. Uh, Certainly, you know, there are things that you're not going to want or you don't even need, but you can find brand new stuff at thrift stores or secondhand places. You can find gently used, hardly can tell anyone ever used it. And and people just didn't have a value for trying to resell it. So they donated it to the thrift store. I mean, it's just, it's more affordable and 
And then that means that you can get nicer stuff than maybe what you even could have bought new, which is really, I think, valuable as far as a gift giving scenario goes that you could give somebody something nicer than if you had bought new. Yeah, I will do this again. Facebook Marketplace, maybe small appliances. We got my mother-in-law like a foot, a really nice foot massager one year, which was like half the price than if we'd bought it new. And, and some of this stuff is just people bought it. They used it once or twice. It wasn't for them, but they couldn't return it. Mm -hmm. Like I see that so often. Or I just got a rug for our rental. They sent her the wrong rug, said, keep it. It's more expensive to ship it back and we'll just send you the correct rug. And she made money. We got a discount and it was a brand new unopened rug. Well, and especially when we live in such an age where we are obsessed with nostalgia, Mm -hmm. this is really working in our favor because everybody wants the old toys and games that us millennials grew up playing with. It's like coming back around full Mm -hmm. circle. And these things you can find at the thrift store, the old board games, the old toys, the old you name it, video games, clothing styles, all of it. So it's like. Why buy the updated version that the company is putting out when you can just find the actual true vintage nostalgic version at the thrift store? Yeah. And if you can't find it at the thrift store, then you can certainly find it on eBay. Mm -hmm. And it will be a little more expensive than the thrift store, but it'll be less expensive than buying the new version for sure, depending on how vintage you want to go. But again, eBay is also a place where I go if I want a a good brand name or thread up, if it's Mm -hmm. like fashion, like my purse is Marc Jacobs and I would have never bought a brand new Marc Jacobs purse. But Mm -hmm. my last purse was not great quality. It fell apart really quickly. And I was like, I'm getting a very good quality purse and I'm just going to do it. And, And you can do that when you are buying like quality designer secondhand, you know it's going to last. Yep. So yes, thread up is great. eBay marketplace, love it. Next, number five, secondhand gifts reduce carbon emissions. So if you're somebody who really values uh, sustainability highly, we don't have to obviously convince you <laughs> that secondhand gifting is great. But it can reduce carbon emissions in a variety of ways so that you may not have known. So from obviously from manufacturing of new products um, that would otherwise fill those needs. Second, on the transportation of the new products from China or Cambodia or wherever they're coming from. And they decrease carbon emissions from landfills because fewer products end up in the trash to release greenhouse gases. So there's three major ways that buying secondhand can reduce carbon emissions. And it is, you don't think about it, but everything's going to end up in the landfill one day. Everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's let's just try it. And you pay for those landfills. Mm-hmm. You You do pay for them, whether you know it or not. So let's Let's keep our city from having to make one more landfill. Mm -hmm. Let's just make that our goal. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can reduce the amount that ends up in a landfill Mm -hmm. if we're not demanding more things be made. Yeah. Oh, I love this is the last one I'm going to read off of this list. But number six, which I love, secondhand gifts can be really unique. And this has been my experience as well. You are not going to a store where there's multiple items of the same thing that are all brand new, you're finding things from other people's homes that they're passing along. And there's most likely not going to be multiple Mm -hmm. of that one item, which means that there can be a higher level of creativity and personalization for gift giving when you're going secondhand. You can find some really amazing one of a kind, whether it's a vintage item or something really specific to that person, you can find really amazing stuff. And as I'm thinking about this, even just reading through this article, some of the best gifts I've received are secondhand in hand were gifts that were, I mean, my my engagement ring is from a consignment store. I don't know who previously owned it, but it's a 1920s antique wedding yeah. ring, engagement ring. And I love it. And um, all of my other favorite jewelry was passed down from my grandmother to my mom to me. Like, these are the things that, that I 
love. And then, you know, of course, yeah, whether you're getting it from family and because that's also secondhand, let's remember, like we don't always have to pay for secondhand. Secondhand might be something we already have in our homes that we can identify a friend or family member who might appreciate and enjoy it more or might be more fitting for their, their lifestyle right now. Heirloom items are secondhand and usually carry so much meaning to it. So these these types of things, especially at a time this year where a lot of us can feel the pinch in our wallets of what's happening in the economy, we can go meaningful. And that could be way better than even what previous years have been when we felt a little bit more fatter wallets buying brand new stuff. But where's that stuff now? And what have we kept? And what actually holds meaning to us? Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this last one that I'm going to talk about is one that I feel specifically like Mm -hmm. connected to. And it's that secondhand gifting limits the support of exploitative consumption systems. And so we say frugality is being a good steward of all your resources, that frugal is stewardship and cheap is manipulation and, Mm. and exploitative. And When we are buying new things that are fast fashion, fast produced, then we are supporting some of these exploitative systems. Uh, And when we opt out, then we are telling retailers that we no longer support the systems they are using to create cheap stuff. Uh, So most consumption systems that feed our purchasing habits use labor from marginalized communities that are paid menial wages, work in terrible conditions, uh, but it's really all they have. It's better than nothing. So it's not that we want it taken away. Mm -hmm. It's that we want to put pressure on companies to do better Mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that if we say, I want more, 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 because they're going to give us what we want and they will ramp up the the production of new stuff in concordance with what we're buying and the prices that we will pay. And that is what leads to these terrible conditions, menial wages in in these marginalized countries. So when we opt out and choose secondhand, the only thing companies listen to is money. And we're telling them by withholding our money uh, that we don't support those practices. Okay. Are you convinced? Are you as passionate about secondhand gifting as we are? Oh, goodness. I mean, I feel so ramped up. I cannot wait to hit the thrift store for my Christmas shopping. Yes. But before you do, before you do, let's talk about 10 tips on giving secondhand Christmas gifts that people will love. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So, how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. Oracle.com slash strategic. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is Sibling Revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full blood siblings, the only full blood in our family well not in the world i mean no in the whole world (laughs) that's just it like no one dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like joel and benji madden and it's fun because we've decided to open it up you know to really like all kinds of different siblings and it's going to be 
a- an awesome season. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Right, exactly. So now we're convinced this is the way to go. So let's talk about the potential barriers that people still might bump against in why they might do this and how to do it well for people. Yeah. So one of one of the biggest pushbacks, and this is listed on this article called Minimize My Mess and talking about tips on giving secondhand Christmas gifts that people will love. There's another portion of the article that's very similar to the first article that we read, but we're looking at the second half. And the first reason, and I would say the one that we hear most often is, what if I offend someone by giving them a secondhand Christmas gift? And yeah, that that that's a that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. It's worth considering. Not everybody is going to be as gung ho about getting something that's been used before. Yeah, you kind of have to know your say. know your audience. Yeah, yeah. Read the room. Now, the room. here's the thing. There's just general standards across the board. Like, don't give gross stuff. Don't give to anybody shirts with holes, including yourself. In including yourself. Don't, give, don't give yourself those things. <laughs> yeah. You deserve better. Yeah. Jen, speaking of a shirt, she's currently wearing that has holes in it and she knows it has holes in it. She got it secondhand, but she's not getting rid of it until she gets rid of the baby that's growing inside I have of her. Limited by giving birth. clothing <laughs> options. We've talked about this. Uh, we're not going to get back Let's into it. Let's not make it. it about me. No. So so here's the thing. What if I offend someone? And I love the advice that this article gives of just ask them. <laughs> like, <laughs> there you go. Wow. That, can, that just totally lets the air out of the what room. If I hate talking to people. <laughs> yeah. Well, then should you I, might not be getting Christmas should gifts I this year. Should I not give them a gift? <laughs> what if I've yeah. never spoken to them at work? Am I still obligated to give them a gift? <laughs> no, the answer is no. Wow. So if you're in casual conversation ahead of time, this can be some proactive work of, hey, what do you think of secondhand gifts if they're really great? And they could either say, no way, it must come in a plastic or cardboard box with a brand new sticker on it. Or they're going to be like, yes, I would love that. That sounds like a great idea. There's plenty of great stuff you can find used. Then, okay, you have your answer. Now, maybe alternative or unpopular opinion that I'm going to say that's not in this article is there have been times that I gave secondhand gifts and didn't tell people. Mm -hmm. I don't think you always have to tell people. I mean, first of all, I'm not giving people coal or junk or Or, something that's underwear or something that smells. And none of us should be getting, this is my personal standard. We should not be getting our underwear or our mattresses from the thrift store. You and I have different opinions are, on mattresses. Well, yeah. I don't get mattresses from, from the, the thrift, thrift store. store. I get them from Facebook Marketplace. And you did vet them. So like, that's okay. You're a little bit on the edge. You were living on the edge. Not totally a decision I would make. But don't give somebody something that is generally accepted to be something that you shouldn't buy used. Right. Like underwear. Have I don't know why you'd be standards. doing that anyway. Uh huh. It's It might be weird in general to give a friend underwear for Christmas. Yeah. So, so like, think about that. For instance, I you know me, I've loved to give plants to people as gifts. So yeah, I have gotten used pottery and put a plant into that used mm-hmm. pottery. I don't got to tell people mm-hmm. that I didn't get that pot from Lowe's or Home Depot. And they're probably more thrilled with it because like the other article said, it's more unique. I have found really beautiful things within that category at thrift stores that I think people are more pleased with than if it were to have been new from some big box store. You don't have to convert people to your agenda. You just have to be true to your values. Mm -hmm. And if you have a family member that's going to talk about you behind your back all year for giving them a a non like new gift, then don't do it. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Yeah, it is not worth the stress. Get them a popcorn tin. It's fine. Or give them money so you don't have to feel responsible oh, yeah. for what they bought with it. Cash is king. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna... No. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Number four. We're both going to talk about number four because it's where to shop. Yes. The best places to shop. And I am going to cover the in-person places. So 
in-person places. Obviously, you know thrift store. Obviously, you know Facebook Marketplace. Um, buy nothing group. This is a good time to babysit your buy nothing group. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, people are getting rid of stuff to make room for new stuff. Ooh. It's a good time mm-hmm. to be on Marketplace and you buy nothing group. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've also got like Facebook communities, just like local mom groups, local whatever groups that could be posting things. Lesser known places, pawn shops. Pawn shops are really great places, especially for jewelry. Like, Jill got her engagement ring from a consignment store. I got mine from a pawn shop Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. I love it. So that's a great place for jewelry and other maybe high value stuff. Consignment stores. They're Mm -hmm. not just fancy clothes for old people. Mm -hmm. There are tons, (laughs) right? You know, you know, that's what it has been before. (laughs) And that may be the stigma you're listening and thinking, I don't have any old people that I want to get clothing for. Nay. I say nay. It has a lot of people, especially children consignment stores. Oh, yes. All the clothes, all the toys, really good there. What I found with consignment stores is that usually they're a little bit more choosy about what they're Uh going to allow into their store because at consignment stores, the thing that sets them apart from thrift stores is that they share their profits with the person who's selling it. So they are definitely more critical about what's going to be on their shelves. The person truly believes that it has enough value to not only make them a little bit of money, but also the store a little bit of money. So you might pay a little bit higher of a ticker to Ticket price, it's going to be less than brand new, but this is especially where you're going to find your really great toys yeah. for kids, maybe some nicer clothing, and uh, especially jewelry. I think this is a great. If we got any listeners who are trying to buy mm-hmm. jewelry this year, I found some awesome consignment stores. Is where I do well with yeah. that kind of thing. The, the real stuff, yes. the real the treasures, real, the real treasures. <laughs> yes, uh, but but yeah, and it's. It's curated stuff, so it saves you time as well. Mm -hmm. There's not as much to look through like a thrift store is. So if you are short on time, consignment stores, pawn shops even. Yeah. So these are... And then we've got your garage and yard sales. If you're in the South, it's starting to be yard sale season. Year round, baby. Yep. Uh, So these are antique stores. These are kind of your in-person places to shop. They're Mm -hmm. all great. And as far as online goes, some of these cross over both, right? Your your buy nothing groups, your Facebook marketplace. This is both online and in person. But for fully online, especially for things like clothing and accessories and purses and shoes, you've got your par- Poshmark, ThreadUp, Mercari. Again, it's, I would say, similar pricing to more your like consignment store pricing. People are trying to get a little bit of higher price point than maybe just a thrift store, still less than brand new and usually very good stuff, gently used, hardly ever used, sometimes new tags on them. So great spot for that category. eBay is really great. Oh, I love eBay. I You use it a lot more yeah. than I do, but it is excellent for all kinds of things, yeah. whether you're getting uh, dishware to like vehicles, eBay is a really great spot. Yeah. And I would say too, for electronics, that would be a great spot to go to. They have a really great buyer protection policy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can feel a little bit more confident. I, I don't think I've ever purchased electronics from there. Mm-hmm. But definitely when I'm looking for a certain brand, um, a certain item, I have a lot of success on eBay and I can find the same item like on Poshmark or ThreadUp and it's a little more expensive there. I save a little bit more on eBay and get gash back from Rakuten. Yes. FrugalFriendsPodcast.com slash Rakuten. I love that it works with so many things. My goodness. Oh, All right. Gosh. There you go. Okay. Go. Okay. Go in peace. <laughs> Ella, so the final thing on this article for me is number eight. That as we give secondhand gifts, I think it can also take off a little bit of pressure 
in the expectation for the recipient. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, Jen. Well, number eight says like, let the recipient know that they can pass their gift on whenever they no longer have use for it. Mm -hmm. I think this is another really great thing when it comes to secondhand, because a lot of times when we've spent a ton of money or we've bought something brand new, we give it to somebody, there can be this unspoken expectation for the recipient, like you must keep this always and forever and use it. And I better be able to see it when it's out at your house. Only your mom does that. I know, but not your mom specifically, John. I'm <laughs> saying like the mom. I mean, you're a not mom. wrong. But yeah, yeah, my mom too. Yeah, I'm moms. Saying, you, speaking you, to the moms. You listening. Yeah, mom. <laughs> yeah, but I think it, it can, and whether or not you, the giver, are saying this, I think it can be a pressure that a recipient can feel. But when we're giving a secondhand gift to already say, look, this item is already getting more life out of it than anyone would have expected. So when you no longer, this no longer fits for you, pass it on, give that thing more life. Uh, So there's just kind of like a mindset and a permission Mm -hmm. attached to that, a greater freedom and flexibility in the whole gift giving exchange process. Yeah, it really becomes the thought that counts. (laughs) Like that's an over, right. It genuinely Mm -hmm. is the thought that counts, not just here, I got you this plastic thing that was on a doorbuster deal on Black Friday. Yeah, yeah. I really thought about it. No, it's it's secondhand. You like actually had to think about it. So that kind of brings to the last one I'll talk about is number nine, challenge yourself to shop secondhand at other times of the year too. I think yeah. when we're doing a lot of shopping this time of year, there's a lot of consumerism. I think this can be a really good like challenge to, okay, let's see how much secondhand gifting I can do this year. And then build up your muscles and your creativity and your planning to do secondhand shopping the rest of the year so that when we get to next Christmas holiday season, we can do even more secondhand gifting Mm -hmm. and we're more prepared. I know number six on here was to give yourself extra time. So this is somewhat something where like Mm. now you can start with the with the looking. Yeah, it's not going to be as effective if if you're waiting till the last minute. That's how anybody spends more. Yeah. Especially with secondhand, you're not going to have the time to find what you need if you are doing it at the last minute. So challenge yourself to start now and then let it carry on through the rest of the year to not just gifts, but things you need regularly to build a habit of choosing secondhand first. That was a tip that I I do appreciate. I didn't really want to blow past either is that the idea of keeping a running list on our phone Mm -hmm. of ideas, gift ideas that we have for the people that we know we're going to be buying for. And that can help us to be on top of things and make the secondhand gift giving possible because it's not as if I can go to the thrift store and find everything I need. It is a practice and patience, checking out multiple different thrift stores, holding out, looking online on some of these sites that we've already talked about. So having that running list can be really helpful when we do find ourselves at a thrift store. Oh, what can I be looking for that's going to be really meaningful. So love that idea. I yes. think this one will particularly come in to, in handy for next year. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, something that comes in handy all the time, we don't have to wait for a year and we don't need to keep a running list in our phone, but already, we can use our phone. Already built up this habit. The, the Bill of the Week. week. for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, my name is Lloyd. My pronouns are they, them, and my Bill of the Week is my fall semester tuition. I'm going to community college for two years, and then I'm going to hopefully go to UT for another two years. I was told that I could apply to the Tennessee Reconnect grant when I turned 23. I turned 23 a week after payment is due for the semester. 
Uh, but I did my own research and found out that actually it's students who would be 23 or older by January 1st of the academic year. So I applied and I got it. And I also got a scholarship for being in my school's community service group. And so my tuition bill went from $2,384 to $119 to negative $580 and 65 cents. I'm putting all the money that I saved on tuition into a three-year certificate of deposit so that I have those extra funds for my final year of college. Lloyd, oh my gosh, I wish I was as responsible as you at 23. Holy smokes. (laughs) 23, not even 23 yet. You are 23 now? Holy smokes. Well done lowering your tuition bill. This feels like, I know that there's not a hierarchy when it comes to bills, but it kind of feels like there is where like tuition bills and what we pay for our education feels like weightier than other bills. Yeah. Well, usually because it represents a lot of debt for a lot of people and have like bringing your tuition down to negative and then having a plan for saving what you didn't spend. Holy smokes. Oh Lloyd, my gosh. Crushing and it. you are giving inspiration to other people because I think scholarships and grants are kind of they're like they feel like a gamble almost like why try because they go to one person. But I think I hope that other people are listening to this who are trying to pay for school And they're like, okay, if Lloyd can do it, then maybe I should at least try. Maybe I should just make an effort. Mm -hmm. So kudos, kudos to you, Lloyd. Thank you so much. I was so, so excited for you. Mm -hmm. Well done. Celebrating with you. You got a good head on your shoulders. You're going to be all right. You're going to be good. If you want to submit your bill of the week, if it has to do with lowering your tuition bill into the negatives, just being a 23 year old who's crushing life, that'd be great. Want to hear from more of you. (laughs) Uh, and, And if not, if you're like a 43 year old who's still figuring it out, you matter too. Visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Leave us your bill. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is sibling revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full blood siblings, the only full blood siblings. In our family. Well, not in the world. I mean, no, in the whole world. (laughs) That's just it. Like, no one. Dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up, you know, to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. It's more than a podcast, it's a celebration of the ties that bind us. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre, this is Murder 101. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. Those murders happened in the mid-1980s. He's out there doing stuff. He just didn't stop. Everything that the students predicted through their profile turned out to be accurate. Redhead killer profile. Male, Caucasian, 5'9 to 6'2, 180 to 270 pounds. Unstable home, absent father and a domineering mother. Right handed, IQ above 100, most likely heterosexual. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. Just because some of these women no longer have people to speak for them does not mean that they deserve to not be spoken for. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? I said, Are you going to kill me? And he said, Yes. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now it's time for The The Lightning Round. Round. I am so excited for this one. Uh, Thank you, Goldie, for our lightning round question today. Oh my gosh, we have a very similar one. Stop it. Oh my gosh. Ah! Um... (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. We're um, morphing into the same we person. Might be. But we are still very different. Okay. I am still wearing a shirt with a hole in it. <laughs> 
And I'm still wearing a sweater. You're wearing a tank top yeah. and I'm wearing multiple sweaters yes. and sweaters. So today's question is a secondhand item you'd love to receive. Mm, we are can putting go it out into That's the universe, our Christmas list. I've got more than one, actually. Oh, can I my just goodness. like list them all off? Maybe. Uh, I mean, you maybe a Christian or editor could relay <laughs> these things to Eric. <laughs> And he can surprise you with them. He can't afford these things. <laughs> he, can't, he can't afford me. <laughs> a whole treasure. He can only afford half treasures. Wow. Okay, Jill, you go first. Because I'm not 100% sure what this is, but I oh. love it. <laughs> That's not, I oh. spelled it wrong. <laughs> I'm curious. I thought it was so, like, it an, an expression machine. No, an espresso okay. machine. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. I would express myself through this machine. Wow, that's for sure. I was really... Well, I knew it was similar to mine, so I was like, yeah. what is this new coffee contraption? No, I would love to get a very high-end espresso machine secondhand. Secondhand, And yeah. I check Facebook Marketplace about every other month hmm. for this type of contraption. They do exist. It just is usually still within the price range of like $500, which might be something that I spend at some point, just like not right now because I'm still in the middle of renovations, but I still do check. I I would love to be able to make cappuccino at home for Mm. myself. And I did have like a lower end kind of espresso machine and milk steamer. And it was awesome. It wasn't super high end. So I feel like I kind of could taste the difference. And then, well, really, it took up a ton of space on our counter Mm. in our kitchen. That was a dumpster fire that we couldn't fit it anymore. (laughs) And it was a friend had given it to me. So it was secondhand. But then I just gave it back to her. Wow. And she was pleased for that. So an espresso machine, if anyone out there wants to gift that to me secondhand or knows where I can get one for a good price. I also have my sights on like a floor steam cleaner. I have seen them mm. at the thrift store, but then I've looked up the reviews and there's like three of the same exact kind at one of the thrift stores I went to, which tells me maybe that item and that brand doesn't work that well if Ooh. three separate people have put it in the thrift store. But I have high gloss floor tile, which looks amazing, but it gets really smudgy easily and it's it's like hard to get shiny again. Hmm. And regular mopping leaves streaks on the ground. It's been a it's been a real challenge. I won't take up too wow. much of your time talking about that. That's so difficult but I think for you. A steam cleaner for my floor is going to do the trick, but I don't want to pay full price to find out. So true. I wait. Where is Jeremy? I haven't seen Jeremy, him in so long. Jeremy's Jeremy's still here. Jeremy's okay. alive and well. Jeremy cleans my floors every other day so we have him set to go him (laughs) monday wednesday friday jeremy for those of you listening is my robot vacuum Uh, and it is thursday okay so yeah tomorrow jeremy will clean and that's great picks up all the the dust and dirt but doesn't like mop the floor you know they have mops now i know i know i I think though what you need to do because i've done a lot of research on this okay is the water needs to be very hot so that it evaporates quickly because that's Mm. always the thing is like it leaves water like Uh, residue yes you have large tiles that are very shiny yeah and the other thing is that they're saying you should use distilled water still yes. haven't tried that because i'm like am i really going to be buying distilled water just to clean my floors and maybe maybe i value the lady that who cleans much. our house requires yeah distilled water because there's minerals yeah. in your other types of water and that's what also leaves some of that that's why i behind. fired her <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <laughs> some people say you can get distilled water from your washing machine like your washing machine auto I don't know that was a video I watched from somebody in the UK huh. so maybe their stuff works differently than our stuff but I'm like how what how? yeah I wouldn't know yeah me neither okay but, okay all right what do you want secondhand okay so I have been struggling this whole pregnancy my taste for coffee has changed so I during six months of the year will only drink like instant coffee like iced mm-hmm. uh, and that went away very quickly. It just, I lost my taste for it. And then I tried to make a cup of coffee with my coffee maker and that was a fail. That also tasted Mm. gross. 
So I have been since July either buying cappuccinos at coffee shops or coming over to Jill's house and drinking her <laughs> coffee. Is it is it, oh yeah, I didn't even ask you. It's palatable? Absolutely. You yes. like it? All so right. that's why I either need to get the full setup that you have or because I'm lazy get an espresso secondhand. Do you think the Nespresso would do it for you? You think you'd like that? So I have had Nespresso before and it was when I was pregnant and I did really like it. Mm -hmm. But I also didn't have the disdain for coffee that I have now. Um, But your coffee that you make me, Jill, is fantastic. The coffee we had in Nashville, which was French press, also fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I think I just am skeptical about my abilities to recreate coffee that doesn't come out of a coffee maker. Mm -hmm. So I am open to options. You've got a good coffee maker. I wonder if it's the the grounds you use. It could also be that. Maybe I need better grounds. Here's what we should do. I should come over to your house with my coffee grounds and try Mm. it in your coffee maker, see if you like it. We're digressing, but... Yeah, I mean, essentially, our dreams of secondhand items we'd love to receive centers around coffee. Basically, I don't <laughs> want secondhand coffee beans, though. No, that no. would be the only thing we need firsthand. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you'll take my coffee. Is that secondhand? Um, kind of. I guess, yeah. We will both partake in it together. That's true. Um, and I also, I would like a Roomba. I would like oh, yeah. a, I, kind of a top-of-the-line one. So yeah. we found, we got a Dyson that was top of the line when we bought it, but we got it from eBay. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so that's how we kind of do those things. Now is a great time because they've gotten better and better. Mm -hmm. And as they're coming out with newer versions, I think people are more apt to get rid of their older versions where that might not have been much of an option a few years ago. So yeah, check it out. I love ours. It's great. When we put down our floors, we couldn't do it in our last house because we had like trip trip like yeah. three levels, uh-huh. like three step downs. Yeah. So it would have only gotten one room. <laughs> but now it will be able to get the whole house because yeah. it's all on one level. All all the rooms except for our bedroom, which does mm-hmm. have a step down. So those uh those are our things. So if you want to send us your five hundred dollar espresso machine, your Nespresso <laughs> or steam, steam cleaner, cleaner or your unused uh, Roomba Look at us. or oh, iRobot. Are we so old? This is what we prioritize. Coffee yeah. and cleaning products. Yeah. No, that's where we're Golly. at, Jill. We are 33 years old. Ugh. I asked for a Dyson for my last... For, I for, know. Uh, not even my last birthday. It was like three years ago. I know. And that used to horrify me. And I avoided those types of gifts just out of pride and principle. And now I've just embraced it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is where I'm at. I think I lost it when I married Travis. <laughs> Because I said no Crocs, and then I married Travis, who wears Crocs, and I was like, well, I've lost, like, everything. I've won the husband game, Mm -hmm. but I've lost everything else. You've won a husband. You've won one and a half children. Yeah, so... That's uh, and I really lost it when I had kids. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> anyhow, thank you all for listening. This has been so fun. All this secondhand purchasing. <laughs> we hope you're inspired. And many of you know we have a private community where we do monthly money challenges, offer accountability because we all need that, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to reining in some finances and paying off debt wherever you find yourself. And one of our members, Debbie, did something amazing. We're gonna shout her out. Mm-hmm. Debbie said. <laughs> shout out to frugal friends the detonators so that's their accountability group name because they're yeah. so fun we have great accountability group names yeah the detonators uh sam w and my therapist <laughs> this is amazing Debbie okay is, you are so everything girl we are the four corners the frugal friends the detonators sam and debbie's therapist <laughs> I have really wanted my husband to join me in making financial decisions. It's lonely and challenging to be doing it all on my own. It's taken nine months, but it's happening. Woo! Enter open enrollment for health insurance, FSA, life insurance, et cetera, et cetera. Me. I would like to do this together. Him. Great. Let's do it Saturday. Me. With the research, it can take about five hours to make the best decision. Him. Four hours? 
You said five. She said four. She said four. That was my bad. Four hours. He says four hours. Surely not me. Actually. Yeah. Discussion, 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 dot, 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 discussion him. Okay. It took four hours (laughs) and an evening, but we definitely made changes based in joint decisions. Clap emoji, clap emoji, clap emoji. Wow. Star emoji. Oh, I love this <laughs> this, journey. Is, uh, this script makes me feel Debbie. like I was there, Debbie. Uh-huh. I, and I'm so, so proud because we don't do this like to get people around <laughs> us on board. We hope that our passion will be a guide to them to mm-hmm. also get on board. And so for you to have this win is great. And for you to be so on that you're like, it's going to take approximately four hours to make these decisions. (laughs) And he's like, nah, girl. And you were right. Uh I wouldn't have even thought that. That's amazing. Nah, girl. But he was on board. I love it. And you know what? That's the thing. We can't ever point to one thing in particular that really starts to turn the needle for us. Usually, is a combination, like Debbie's saying. So, like, find your people, find your motivation, find your group, find your challenges, memberships, whatever it is to like bring all these corners together to really find a different pathway. And usually it's honored. That's the thing that we're seeing for our people in this membership. So if, if we can be a part of that equation for you all, that's amazing. If any of this sounds worthwhile to you, frugalfriendspodcast.com slash club. You can see what money challenge we have coming up next. You could be a part of a dope accountability group like the detonators. You can come up with your own fun pun. Uh, You can can rhyme. Mm -hmm. Make it punny. Ooh, yes. (laughs) Here for it. Um, But ultimately, just find your people. Figure out where that is. Do the thing. And we'll either either see you in there or we'll see you in the thrift store or we'll see you next time. See you next time. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. What do you think is Travis's biggest hope for what he would get secondhand? Everything in his life. He would eat, sec- <laughs> he will, would, and does eat secondhand and food. Food, that's true. Yeah. Um, anything and everything, mm-hmm. honestly. I, yeah, anything he wants, he wants it secondhand, which is great. Yeah. I love that about him. And he gets me secondhand stuff, and I love that. He's very good at it. Um, I can't... I don't really know what he wants right now. He wants to finish the rental, mm-hmm. because I want to finish the rental. We want that together. All of us want that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just got some disc golf stuff. He wanted a boomerang that he saw at a yard sale the other day. I talked him out of that. <laughs> I that just brought back a memory for me. I feel like there was a time when we went through there were multiple times that we've gone thrift store shopping together, like as a couple activity. And there was a boomerang he checked out then. This would have been years ago, but before we moved here and potentially before we even lived here in our trailer. And he was he almost bought a boomerang. I so he loves Frisbees and those uh, go forward mm-hmm. and <laughs> right? a boomerang I can just see coming back and hitting our son in the face or worse our window you know not if you're good at it I mean but surely Kai will throw it he is not good at it okay so we have more okay. hands to think I'm sure Travis will be fine at it he's good at everything but I just don't want it in my house. I mean, with a Frisbee, that could still hit Kai in the face and break a window. If you throw it at the window <laughs> or the child. Yeah. Um, if you throw a boomerang any which way, you don't know where it's going to come up. Have you seen the Peppa Pig episode where they go mm-hmm. to Australia and everybody throws the boomerang <laughs> and it just hits Mr. Wallaby's house? Like every <gasps> single one of his windows, every time they throw oh, wow. the boomerang. Okay, so that's what has... 
made your decision yeah. and he's never going to get a boomerang. I've seen that Peppa Pig clip. Theory. I've seen that clip so many times. <laughs> I feel like it's a sign. <laughs> and now we will never own a boomerang because of Peppa Pig. Okay. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Does uh, Eric still want an indoor water feature? Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> That's never going to go away. No. He always wants something. The one thing that I think we're going to have the best luck at secondhand that we've been on the lookout for for years and years is like a, a kind of like a piece of furniture, like a storage organization thing. We've seen them before, but haven't ever been able to like pull the trigger on them. But essentially like metal drawers, like small compartments of drawers that he wants to be able to put his microphones into, hmm. but could also be kind of like a cool piece as well. Um, Form and function. Yeah. Like if you kind of think like old library card catalogs yes. yeah, or like old warehouse or mechanics tool bench that was well taken care of that has like you know, your little kind of like four by four drawers or slots. And he yeah. wants something like that for his microphone storage. So I'm on the lookout. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have any library memorabilia. You so many pictures to send of, like, us. storage bins. Is this what you want? The thing is, is a, a lot of that type of stuff does exist at like antique stores and thrift stores up north. Uh, but now that we're in the south, it's like, well, how are we going to get that to us? I can't go shopping up there anymore. No, we don't. We don't throw stuff like that away. <laughs> yeah, we treasure it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, antiques aren't aren't as huge of a thing down here as they are nah. up north. It's but. yeah, few and far between. Yeah. That's okay. We'll survive. Yeah. As long as we get our coffee machines oh, and our cleaning products. Much more important. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast, it's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings and it's going to be a, an awesome season listen to sibling revelry with kate hudson and oliver hudson on the iHeartRadio app apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts hi i'm francis fry and i'm ann morris and we are the hosts of a new ted podcast called fixable we've helped leaders at some of the world's most competitive companies solve all kinds of problems on our show we'll pull back the curtain and give you the type of honest unfiltered advice we usually reserve for top executives Give us a call and we'll help you solve the problems you're stuck on. Listen to Fixable on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.